Hi everyone, I'm Crystal Diff, Program Coordinator with History Services, on location today at Cedar Point Environmental Park in Inglewood. I'm standing in front of the historic Cookie House, which was part of the Bass Biological Laboratory in the 30s and 40s. This building has a connection to the icon I'm going to present today, Marjorie Harris Carr. Ms. Carr received her undergraduate degree in zoology from Florida State College for Women, which is now Florida State University, in 1936. But ultimately, she was denied entry into the graduate program that only accepted men. Upon her graduation, Carr became the first female wildlife technician in the entire United States. She didn't give up on her passion and worked at a Florida fish hatchery, then found her way to Inglewood to work as a lab technician for the Bass Biological Laboratory with founder John Bass Jr. This was one of the first co-educational facilities for women in the field of science, a field that women were generally excluded from at this time. It was there that she met her husband, Archie Carr, a frequent researcher at Bass Labs and a noted naturalist and author, especially known for his work with sea turtles. The couple had five children together. The Bass Lab was such an integral part of their lives that they chose it as the location for the celebration of their union on June 11, 1937. In correspondence now housed at the Mount Marine Laboratory and Aquarium Archives, John Bass shows appreciation for her professional work at the Bass Biological Laboratory and is regretful to see her go, yet understanding of her need to pursue further endeavors. She earned a master's degree in zoology at the University of Florida in 1942, which was officially an all-male institution at the time. It is thought that her perseverance and experience in the field, along with recommendations by her impressed male colleagues, helped get her foot in the door to this gender-exclusive program, a major feat for the time period. By the late 1960s, Carr was actively involved in coordinating efforts to stop the construction of the Cross Florida Barge Canal, which runs across the state of Florida from the Gulf of Mexico to the St. Johns River and to restore the Oklawaha River. In 1969, Carr co-founded Florida Defenders of the Environment, or FDE, to lead conservation efforts in the area. The FDE remains active to this day. She helped write one of the nation's first environmental impact statements for the FDE and the Environmental Defense Fund against the United States Army Corps of Engineers for environmental impacts of the Cross Florida Barge Canal on the Oklawaha River ecosystem. Her efforts were a success and the canal plans were deauthorized. It became part of the Florida State Park System managed by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and also known as the Great Florida Riverway. In 1991, Carr was appointed by the Florida Legislature to the Canal Lands Advisory Committee as a representative of the public and advisor to the Greenway's master plan. In 1998, the Greenway was officially renamed the Marjorie Harris Carr Cross Florida Greenway in Carr's honor. The Greenway runs 110 miles and comprises more than 70,000 acres dedicated to preserving native wildlife. She authored many works on biology and ecology and won numerous awards alongside those listed previously. She received the Award of Merit in 1965 from the Florida Audubon Society, Florida Governor's Award for Outstanding Conservation Leadership in 1970, National Wildlife Federation's Conservation Service Award in 1976, Florida Audubon Society's Conservationist of the Year in 1984, Teddy Roosevelt Conservation Award in 1990. She was also entered in the Florida Women's Hall of Fame in 1996. And in 1997, she was inducted into the Florida Wildlife Federation's Conservation Hall of Fame, as well as receiving many other awards during her lifetime. She was active in preservation up until her death in 2005. Her legacy lives on and her impact is not only seen locally with ties to Inglewood's world-renowned laboratory, but can be seen on a state, national, and international level. 
Thank you for tuning in to this month's History Spotlight. I can't wait to see you again next month where we share another local history icon. For more information on the historic Cookie House, be sure to check out our virtual tour, which is available online at the Charlotte County Community Services YouTube channel.